Final Fantasy XIV and I have always had a bit of a complicated relationship. By all means, I should love this game. I really like the Final Fantasy franchise. I've played tons of the games. I love the Chocobos, the Moogles, the Crystals. I even got a PS4 just to play Final Fantasy XV. Mistakes were made. And besides loving Final Fantasy, I also really like MMORPGs. I grew up playing RuneScape, MapleStory and Guilders 1. I barely left my house the month WoW Classic came out and I make a living as a Guilders 2 content creator. I love immersing myself into these worlds and taking on challenges together with others. Guild Wars 2 is my main game, and I don't expect any game to replace it like ever. You can check out all the videos on my channel to see how much of a fangirl I am. But I do like giving other MMOs a role too, and Final Fantasy XIV always seems perfect for that. It's a Final Fantasy MMO, and it's very successful. Clearly, it is a very well made game, but it just never really managed to click with me. Until now, which is why I'm making this video. But before we get into that, let's talk about all of my unsuccessful attempts at playing Final Fantasy XIV. The first time I ever set foot in Eorzea was in July 2016, which is like six years ago. I was browsing the Steam sales when I noticed that the game was on sale for just 5 euros. Some of my friends were playing and I had heard a lot of good stuff about 2.0 and Heaven's Wars. So hey, for 5 euros, why not give it a shot? I downloaded the game and I really liked the character creator. I'm the kind of person who will spend 2 hours making the perfect character and FF14's characters looked really pretty. While making my character, I was even getting pretty excited looking at the environments in the backgrounds. I was just imagining running around in a brand new, well-made fantasy world. And then I finalized my character and logged into the game. I played for maybe around 30 minutes. What can I say, I didn't really give the game a proper chance. I was super to go to Stew at the time, like always, so I think I just didn't really have the open mind that I needed when starting a new MMO. My first impression was actually just not that good. I didn't like that there were quite some invisible walls where I started and that I couldn't explore freely. The animations to me felt a little bit stiff and not as fluid as the ones that I am used to from Guild Wars 2. So I just kind of stared at some dialogue about the Gridadia marketplace, felt overwhelmed and a little bit bored, locked off and went straight back to Guild Wars 2. I didn't even get to the combat. I gotta say, the character creator was pretty fun though. A couple years later, in early 2019, I would finally give the game another shot. Two of my friends from Guild Wars 2 were getting married in FF14 and they asked me and some others if we wanted to play music for them. In Guild Wars 2, I am a member of C Major, a guild that focuses on playing music together, live, without scripts. Now, it turns out that Final Fantasy XIV has a music system as well, so our friends asked if we wanted to play some tunes in Final Fantasy. So, I set out to make a character and obtain the instruments. The way you gain access to instruments is to get an archer character to level 30 so you can become a bard. So, I made myself an archer and started to rush through the game. I had some friends who I was playing with, and our only goal was to rush to 30 as quickly as possible. <laughs> After all, the wedding was in a couple of days. We skipped through all of the dialogue and ran daily with that dungeons until we hit level 30 and got those sweet instruments. The in-game wedding was really cool, and hey, here's a fun fact, last month I actually got to go to their IRL wedding too. And you know what? I actually had fun playing FF14 this time. Playing an MMO with some friends on voice chat is always a good experience. But I was mostly having fun because I was playing with my friends, not because I really enjoyed Final Fantasy XIV. The game honestly seems kinda boring to me. I was just running from one place to another and skipping all the dialogue. The dungeons were kinda fun, but at the time I found the combat to be nothing special. I was used to the complicated Guild Wars 2 raid bosses, so the Copper Bell Mines dungeon didn't exactly blow me away. So after the wedding was done, I stopped playing, unsubbed and went back to Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Again, I told myself that Final Fantasy XIV just wasn't for me. It was a fun time, but I had zero desire to run to 50 more quest NPCs. That was my second unsuccessful attempt at trying to get into FF14. 
Or, well, looking back at it, I don't think it was really a proper attempt either. Then last year, I suddenly got interested in FF14 yet again. I had become a full-time Guild to Steel content creator, and a lot of my viewers and streamer friends were sharing their excitement for Endwalker, the new FF14 expansion. Lots of my friends were playing, someone even linked me this no-clip documentary about how Square Enix turned the game around after the initial train wreck release, and I was really starting to get intrigued. It really seemed like FF14 was something special. Perhaps I had to judge the game too quickly. I felt like maybe, just maybe, if I gave the game a proper chance, I might be able to enjoy it a lot, just like so many of my friends. So that is exactly what I did. Every first day on my stream is Variety Nights, so I decided that my next Variety game would be FF14. And then finally, on my third attempt, the game clicked for me. After many years, I suddenly got why people like FF14. I got sucked in properly. Even though there are some things that I don't like about the game, like the invisible walls and limited exploration, I found that there were a lot of things about FF14 that I really, really did like. Like the story, the world building, the dungeons, trials and raids, and oh wow, the music. D definitely also the music. It was like really pretty and beautiful. It's like... <laughs> After about half a year of playing, I just finally wrapped up A Realm Reborn. So before I start Heavensward, I really wanted to make a video chronicling my experiences. Let's get started. First, let's talk about my favorite thing about FF14, the story. I always heard a lot of bad things about how slow A Realm Reborn story is. People always told me, just get through A Realm Reborn and get to the expansions. That is where the story really gets good. But here's the surprising thing. I actually really enjoyed the story of A Realm Reborn, and it is arguably the biggest reason I stuck with the game this time. Spoiler warning for A Realm Reborn, A Realm Reborn Raid, and the Realm Reborn post-quest coming up. In one of my earlier attempts to play FF14, I was trying to rush as fast as possible to level 30, and the main quest of FF14 had me bored out of my mind. It really just came down to pick up quests, travel here, talk to NPC, get new quests. Sometimes you would have to kill some enemies, but most of the main quest was just me walking from one place to another without much gameplay. I did not have a good time. While I was progressing and getting to the kind of fun dungeons pretty fast, I dreaded doing more of the main quests. It was just a lot of walking and pressing through text boxes, and it just wasn't very fun. This time, I took a different approach. I was going to level at my own pace, without trying to rush to a certain level. I decided to actually take the time to read all of the dialogue and pay attention. People always talk about how the expansion stories in FF14 get really good, so I wanted to properly pay attention to the story of the base game. Now, this of course meant that I was progressing a lot slower and not getting to the fun stuff like dungeons as fast, but I had a lot more fun. Suddenly, I wasn't just walking from NPC to NPC endlessly. There was stuff going on! I was invested! What is going on with these primals, and why is Tancred so attractive? Wow, Lara, who would have thought this story is actually more fun if you, like, actually read it? Yeah, I know how silly it sounds. But in my defense, a lot of people talk about how A Realm Reborn is kind of boring, and the story only starts to get good once you get to the expansions. However, I found that once I was invested in the story, I actually didn't find A Realm Reborn that bad. I found the cast of characters likable. I wanted to know what was going on, and the story was interspersed with these epic trials and fun dungeons. As a Guild Wars 2 lore nerd, I actually found it very refreshing to have all of these long dialogue sequences. I know that it's not everyone's thing, but I found it awesome how in Final Fantasy XIV, the dialogue overload allowed for lots of character development and world building. These quests made me like the characters and made me feel very familiar with Eorzea, a world which I barely knew anything about before. The story starts off with your character doing pretty standard adventure stuff in your starter area. For me, this was Gridania. I enjoyed Gridania quite a bit. Like I said before, I needed a while to get used to the invisible walls and the more restrictive movements, but gosh, Gridania is such a vibe. 
The music is really pretty, the environments actually look good despite being designed for a PS3, and after a little while I really started to feel immersed in this little forest nation. Something which I did find disappointing was that in FF14's open world there wasn't all that much to do. There's not that much exploration gameplay and I found fates to be very lacking compared to the large scale open world events that I'm used to in Guild Wars 2. But you know what? That's okay. Not every game has to focus on the same things. I do hope though that in later expansions the open world gets a little bit more interesting. Eventually, your character leaves Cridania behind and joins the Science of the Seventh Dawn, who are primarily focused on dealing with the primal threats. There's basically all these beast tribes in Eorzea, and those beast tribes can summon spooky, scary, dangerous primal creatures. Most of the story involves investigating these primal threats, together with one or two other scions, and then coming up with a way to defeat the primal. It is pretty well structured and it does a good job at introducing the player to the world of Eorzea and its inhabitants. It is a bit formulaic maybe, dealing with one primal threat after another, but because the story is structured into these arcs, it mostly keeps it from going still. Mostly. There are a few exceptions which I will talk about later. My favorite characters were Fangret and Yastola. Fancret is just a badass and is like wildly attractive, <laughs> and I think I wanna be Yastola when I grow up. She is also a badass and is not afraid to call people out on their BS. I also liked Ida and Papa Limo, mainly because they were around all the way from the start of my story in Gridania. They got quite a lot of time to develop, but oh my gosh, towards the end of A Realm Reborn, Papa Limo got like really mean towards Ida. <laughs> Please tell me you're joking. God's sakes, Ida. I feel as though I'm reliving the same scene over and over with you. How many times do you need to be told that White Aurocide cannot wow. stop Wow, Papa Limo. Oh my god, Papa Limo. I thought they were friends. Calm down, Papa Limo. You're, you're, you're giving me anxiety. Minfidia seems like maybe the most boring of the main cast. She wasn't annoying or anything, but she just didn't seem to have that much to do. My chatters told me that she had most of her arc wrapped up in the 1.0 version of FF14, so that kind of makes sense. One of my other favorite characters was Alphena. I just really liked the idea of his character. <laughs> He's a bit cocky, but his heart is in the right place. He starts off being like super confident that he can help make things better for Eorgia, but then really struggles when some of his plans end up going wrong and causing harm. I think he's a really well written character and I'm very curious to see what will happen to him next. By the start of Heaven's Wars, he seems very sad and discouraged. I hope he gets back to being his Redditor self. My highlight of the Realm Reborn story was definitely the finale of 2.55, right before Heaven's Wars. The story really got intense and lots of plotlines came together in one spectacular finale. I felt like I was watching an intense Game of Thrones episode. I sort of had this feeling that stuff was gonna go wrong, after all there were quite a lot of hints, but the way it actually ended up playing out was still very unexpected. It was really good and a fantastic way to set up the next big expansion story. I cannot wait to see how Heaven's Wars continues. They actually like, kinda suggest that most of your friends are dead. There's no way, right? Like, th there, there's no way they would kill Fancred and Yustola, right? I am a little bit worried. But that is not to say that everything about the Realm Reborn story was perfect. Sometimes the story would just kind of slow down and lose all momentum. There was this one sequence where we had to stop Titan, but somehow we ended up organizing this banquet for someone, which involved us going to lots of NPCs all over the world to gather ingredients. And it just dragged on and on and on. Now, the battle with Titan afterwards was really cool, but uh, I just kept waiting for it to be over and for the story to get fun again. There was another instance of this where we were trying to get a certain crystal and we just kept doing all these quests and then finding out that we had gotten the wrong crystal. <laughs> I didn't like these parts. Here is hoping that this will not happen as much once I start the expansions. Also, I kinda dislike Rian J. <laughs> He just makes me question my English language skills. He's just kind of there, spewing Shakespearean language, and I have like no clue what he's even saying. Mine intent, as well thou knowest, 
was but to impress upon thee the gravity of the circle. Yes, 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 yes. Lest thou doubt a deiform entity. You sing old difficult verse doesn't make you seem smart, Rianje. It just makes you seem pretentious. Hopefully, I will warm up to him later. Also, apparently he is evil now. I totally call this. Anyone who uses such a vocabulary cannot be trusted. Besides the main story, there were a bunch of side stories that were really enjoyable as well. I love the white mage and the bard job quests. It is so cool that every job has its own fleshed out questline with different characters that actually have some depth. It almost reminded me a bit of the different guilds that you could join in Oblivion. Very cool. It really just makes the job feel like a genuine part of the world. You're not just a conjurer, no, there is a conjurer's guild with lots of characters and stories. I wish Guild Wars 2 had something like that. I also really enjoyed the raid stories. I played for the Crystal Tower raids and also for the Coils of Bahamas. These stories didn't feel super necessary for the main boss, but they actually developed the main characters a bit more and did a lot of cool world building. It almost makes me a little bit sad that quite some players probably skip these stories, even though they are really good and feel like an integral part of Realm Reborn. There were also a ton of cool characters in these stories. The Crystal Tower had this cat boy named Grahatia who seals himself inside of the Crystal Tower at the end of the story. He was only in the story for a little bit, but I genuinely felt sad about his sacrifice. The Calls of Bahamut has Alice, who is Alphano's sister. She is really cool too, and I hope she appears in the story a bit more later. There's this plotline about how she's just trying to do what her grandfather wanted instead of trying to forge her own path. That plotline didn't really work for me. Like, Alphano, gosh, just let her do what she wants. Well, you're only doing it because grandfather wanted it. Who cares, Alphano? Oh, I I love you, Alphano, but stop giving your cool sister a hard time, please. The Crystal Tower was pretty easy to play through, but the Calls of Bahamas were genuinely pretty hard. I know you can do them unsync later on and just sort of abuse the fact that you're level 80 doing level 50 content, <laughs> but it really felt like this story slowed us in well before the end of A Realm Reborn. It's a bit sad most players won't get to experience it until much later on. Anyway, speaking of all these raids, let's talk about the other thing which I really enjoyed about FF14, the combat and encounters. At the start of the game, I honestly thought that FF14's combat was alright, but nothing special. My main game is Guild Wars 2, and I adore the combat in that game. Guild Wars 2's combat is really fast and fluid. You have to dodge attacks with a dodge roll, and you rarely find yourself standing still. In comparison, FF14's combat while leveling just felt a little bit slow and a little bit clunky. It doesn't help that at lower levels you don't have access to a lot of skills. I was also playing White Mage, which I've been told is one of the slower classes when it comes to combat. During the main story and the job quests, my opinion on the combat didn't change much. It only changed once I got into some of the harder contents. Before starting Heavensward, I wanted to make sure that I got a bit of a taste of FF14's endgame. I've heard a lot of great things about the recent trials, and many people told me that in hard content, the combat really started to shine. Of course, the real endgame only starts when she hits max level, but there is lots of challenging content in the base game too. You can play the old raids and extreme trials synced to the old max level and the old gear level to make sure that it's still pretty challenging. It's not quite the exact same as it was back in the day because of different balance and power creep, but it's still pretty challenging and really fun. So before starting Heavensward, I told myself that I wanted to play through all the extreme trials and the Coils of Bahamut raid series synced. I got some people from my chat together and we dove right into this difficult content. And that was a really great decision. It took us a while to get through this content, but this is where the FF14 combat system got really fun. This is where I really got hooked on this game. All of these fights required quite a bit of coordination and teamwork, and while it was a bit different from the Guilds 2 raids that I am used to, they scratched that same itch for me. I had such a blast learning these fights, figuring out the mechanics and then getting the kill after a couple of hours of trying. Right before recording this video, our team took down Bahamas, the final boss of the Coilus raids. It was genuinely really hard. <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe not as hard as it was when the content first came out, but it took us around 6 hours of progress to get our kill. And wow, actually getting the kill just felt so awesome. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Even though the combat isn't quite as fast and intense as Guild Wars 2's, the amount of complex mechanics more than make up for us, making for some really intense fights. While before, playing White Mage was very chill and pretty slow, I was now constantly juggling complex mechanics, managing my MP and trying to make sure everyone would stay alive. I had an absolute blast completing these fights with my community, and now I finally get why so many raiders are fond of this game. I'm not sure if I'll have the time for it, but part of me really wants to find a static and try these ultimate fights which everyone is talking about. I imagine those are super fun. Something that's really cool about FF14 is that the group content is really simple to get into. You just open the duty finder, press the content you want to play and queue up for us. You cannot quite queue up for the really hard content, which kind of makes sense, since that content can require hours of practice, but it's really simple to just get into a regular difficulty dungeon or trial. And once you know the basics of the normal modes, it is a lot less overwhelming to get started with the extreme or savage version. I'm actually pretty sad that the Codes of Bahamas don't really have an easy mode and can't really be queued up for. I think that most people who don't have a stream community to play with will probably have trouble finding a group to do those with. So here we are, Final Fantasy XIV has finally managed to hook me, just like it has hooked so many others. That is not to say I'm quitting Guild Wars 2 or anything, that is still my main game and a lot would have to happen for that to ever change. But now I understand why so many people love FF14 and I kinda love it too. This first day, I will be starting my playthrough of Heavensward over on my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash Like I said, I am very curious to see what will happen in the story. I'm guessing that all my friends are totally still alive. I think Alphana will probably do something awesome and get back his confidence, and I'm really hoping that his sister Alice makes another appearance. There is this war going on between Ishgard and the dragons, but my guess is that the dragons aren't as evil as we think. Maybe in typical Final Fantasy fashion, we figure out that this whole war was set up by some evil masterminds, and at the end of the expansion, these guardians and the dragons will actually like each other. But hey, who knows, these might be absolutely terrible predictions. If you want to join me for this journey, definitely stop by my Twitch stream. And if you are on an EU data center, maybe you even want to join me for some dungeons, trials or raids. That's it for me all, I hope you enjoyed the video. See ya! <laughs>